Um, I'm very happy to, to start this, this uh, meeting and really uh, and often in, in opening greetings people say you know, how pleased they are to see everybody and so on. But this meeting really is very special to me. Uh, and it's special because uh, it's a vision coming true uh, with, all of you, uh, with all of you here. Um, we called our, uh, our, our group, which is a network of uh, philosophers of science around the Mediterranean, we called the pond following Plato. Uh, uh, and this is the quotation that we use, and Statis will tell us a lot more about this later, I hope. Uh, um, Plato writes, I believe that the earth is very large and that we who dwell between the pillars of Hercules and the river Phasis live in a small part of it about the sea, like ants or frogs about a pond, and that many other people live in many other such regions. Plato encourages us to look around and to remember that there are other parts of the world and that we shouldn't concentrate so much on the local culture. But I think that in, in contemporary academia, the problem is exactly the reverse. We see ourselves as part of an international community, <coughs> international academic and international intellectual community. And we tend to forget that there are other aspects to our intellectual and other aspects of life. Um, the international community is in fact a community that is dominated uh, in the most, for the most obvious reasons by certain countries, certain cultures. Uh, today, these are North America, North Europe, the UK. Uh, and these cultures dominate the, the uh, intellectual community. Of course, we speak the English language. This is not an international language. This is a language of certain countries. But for good reasons, we use it. It's good, it's good to have an, a sort of international language. But we should remember every now and then that this community is not exactly international, but has its uh, reasons for being the way that it is right now. Um, and uh, uh, it is, though, although it is good to have this feeling of being part of the international community and feeling as if the language is international, it's good to remember every now and then that there are these local aspects and these local places. Um, the problem uh, uh, is that this situation of feeling that we are in an international community, although it's not exactly uh, uh, like this, uh, this situation perpetuates itself in that many of the most talented young scholars that are educated in the peripheral countries move to the northern dominant countries because of financial pressures, job situations, and so on. Many of the workshops and scholarships are in the northern dominant countries. And so also more senior scholars find themselves having to adjust to the criteria of those countries. Can this situation be changed even a little bit? And should it be changed? I believe that it should to some extent. We should look also inside, not only to each of our national local community, but more importantly, to our neighbors that share with us not only the same geographical region, but also many cultural traits. And the case of the Mediterranean region is very special. In the philosophy of science communities around the Mediterranean, there is an enormous potential for doing excellent work. And the vision is that through collaboration and solidarity, we can help each other realize this potential. As a united group, we can do things that we cannot do on our own. Actually, it's not clear what is the goal here and what is the means. The academic excellence can be the result of solidarity and collaboration, but also the other way around. By a collaboration towards academic achievements, we can form an island of friendship and goodwill. When I became director of the Edelstein Center for History and Philosophy of Science some years ago, it was immediately clear to me that this is the vision I want to promote. When I shared it with Statis Psilos during a sabbatical in Athens, he was immediately enthusiastic to join, and we set out to make it happen. During Statis's visit to Jerusalem, he met Gabi Motzkin from the Van Leer Institute, who immediately offered his support, and the result is that we're here today. 
These are times of social, political, and economic difficulties for all of our countries around the Mediterranean. This very fact makes us more sensitive to each other's struggle, more understanding of each other, and more willing to offer the help that we can. While knowing each other's research, we will, be more, we will tend more to read each other's work, share and collaborate in research and in teaching. In view of the special conditions in our region, we believe that intellectual riches does not require material wealth and can flourish also when means are modest. So we're committed to be aware of this fact and to use our means for the benefit of all as we do in this conference. Finally, in these days, it's important to emphasize our commitment to forming a safe and inclusive egalitarian intellectual environment, not least of all, that ones that promotes gender uh, balance for, or for all to share. This is the vision, and I'm full of joy that it comes true. Thank you all for sharing with us this special moment. And now let me invite my good friend and incredible colleague, Professor Statis Psilis from the University of Athens. I'll start with something I hope it's interesting because you only came up with this idea of Phaedo, the poem. So I thought, what, what the hell is going on there? Why, why, why what, what, what's the context of this quotation? And I'm going to read out the quotation very briefly. Eti tinin efi pamega tin afto ke imasikin tus mehri iraklion stilon. Hercules pillars. Apophasidos from Fasis river. It doesn't say river, but it's obviously. Ens mikrotini morio. Osper peritelma. Μύρμιγκας ή βατράχους περί την θάλατα ανικούντας και τους άλωθη πολλούς εν πολύς ιούτης τόπης οικίν. <coughs> A translation, which is interesting, it's you know, what, what all more or less put up. Also, I believe that the earth is very vast. That's part of Fedo. Fedo is one of, the, of his mature dialogues, and, and he talks a lot about the immortality of the soul because he's about to die. He's about to be... Uh, he's been sentenced, he will be sentenced to death by, by his fellow Athenians who served so, for so long, so, so well. So there are four arguments at least about the immortality of the soul, but somehow he puts forward his vision about the earth being round uh, and, and supported by various vortices so it doesn't fall down. But the key point there is that we live in a region which is part of a larger region. We should ex explore this larger region. And we live in this small region, which the earth is very vast, and uh, that we, we, we who dwell in the region extending from the river's fasces to the pillars of Heracles, of Hercules, inhabit a small portion only about the sea. And smikrotini morio. Morio is the Greek word for molecule, by the way. So moria is molecules. Uh, and very much like ants and, 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 and frogs live around the pond, a Mars, Thelma, is, 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 uh, is the Greek word, uh, and that there are other inhabitants of many other like places. So I think that's an inclusive vision. It, it, it points to an identity. We live around the pond, we live around the Thalata, it's a small region, Smikrotinimorio, it's a molecule. Of, 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 of a structure, and we should explore the structure, but we should somehow live with the fact that we live in this, in this molecule. And I think that's a vision of the pond, which I like very much. Now, let me show you two more slides. That's the ancient world according to Herodotus. That, that's, what, that's what Plato had in mind. And of course, you know, you know these, are, these are the pillars. But where is Fasis? Where is Fasis? Fasis is over there in Colchis, in Caucasus, at the far end of Black Sea. So the Mediterranean is very inclusive, actually. So, so the, the vision is very inclusive. 
the Balkans are inside, the, 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 the nations or the, or the, the, the people of, uh, living around the Black Sea, and of course all the countries that surround the Mediterranean. And that's a relatively more modern map where you can see Fasis River there on the top. Anyway, so that's about it when it comes to slides. So it's an inclusive vision. The Mediterranean is a small portion of a larger part, of a larger world, and, and, and we want to do both. So uh, I won't say much. I, I would say that, that my own vision about, about the pond is captured by two words, opportunity and inclusivity. And uh, I would very much like this to be an inclusive enterprise, including the Arab world. Uh, and uh, as many people as possible from the regions around the Mediterranean, uh, hoping to overcome division, enhance integration, uh, and create opportunities for all of us to meet and talk, especially younger colleagues. With younger colleagues, things are very difficult around the pond. Uh, due to the financial and economic crisis, there are no jobs, basically. So we should try to make initiatives to create opportunities for younger people to find, to stay in the community. I think that's an important point. And finally, I want to thank two people. Orly, who came up with the idea and the lively quotation and the vision behind it, and Gabriel Motskin, who engulfed this idea right away. Right from the start. I mean, I had never met him. I came over here a year ago, roughly. I went to his office, and he put up, he put forward the financial plan about it, which is amazing. How much they can offer, and what support they can give to us. And this was extremely moving because I felt at home right away. Uh, thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much for being part of it. It's, it's going to be the start of a long and successful uh, trajectory, uh, which will create or reinstate an identity. The Mediterranean identity, which we all share culturally, also you can see it here. You feel like at home a little bit, I think. You know, traffic is mad <laughs> and things like that. Okay, thank you very much.